So you're thinking of traveling to Guatemala, but you're not sure where to start. In this video, we're going to introduce you to the best places to go. Guatemala is the land of the eternal spring and what a rico, rich and diverse country it is. We enjoyed living here, we stayed for over two months, and here are the best areas to see, visit or stay in the country. Rio Dulce, it means sweet river. This 44 kilometer river is eight hours from Guatemala City. It flows out of Lake Isabel, which has a large manatee population. There's a small Spanish colonial fort called Castillo de San Felipe de Lara, and it was built to stop pirates from entering the lake from the Caribbean. Arr. This beautiful lake boasts many small towns, local people, fishermen, markets, and even marinas and resorts. This lake is also home to one of the largest bridges in Central America. The river also flows through a huge gorge where each side of the river rises up 300 feet and are covered with teak, mahogany and palm trees, housing toucans and howler monkeys. The Rio Dulce ends at the Caribbean Sea near the town of Livingston, which is our next location to check out. Feel the Caribbean vibe in Livingston. This is a small town located at the mouth of the Rio Dulce and the Gulf of Honduras in the Caribbean. The action in this town is concentrated around the docks where local people catch a lot of fish and lay them out to dry. Livingston has basically one main street that has shops, places to eat, and tour agencies. It's home to the main concentration of the Garufuna people who, in Guatemala, speak their own native language and have their own traditions, food, and music. The Garufuna people and culture are significantly different from the Mayan people. Most of the Garufuna people seem to hang out near the beach areas. Interestingly, in this Garifuna area, the Mayans seem to own and run all the shops, ironically. Flores. Flores is a tiny island on Lake Petanitsa, connected to the mainland by a short causeway. It's located in northern Guatemala, surrounded by thick jungle due to the lengthier wet season in this area that it stretches from May until January. Flores is a great small area to spend the weekend, or even a week just to relax. We recommend walking around. It's really quite beautiful to see all the brightly colored houses and buildings. You can take a water taxi and for just 25 quetzales, you can spend the afternoon at Jorge's Rope Swing, which also has a diving board, restaurant, Wi-Fi, and hammocks. It's a great way to beat the heat and Flores is hot. Many people use Flores as the base to explore the next destination we'll talk about but Flores is quite calm, cute in its own right, and we think well worth exploring. If you're watching this video, you've likely decided you're gonna travel to Guatemala or seriously considering it, and you're probably interested in well, what do things cost when I get there. Well, we've made a video just for you detailing the cost of a bunch of items that we purchased while we were living on Lake Atitlan, Guatemala. You can find that video here. Tikal. Located in the Mayan lowlands of Patan, the largest state in Guatemala. The Tikal ruins have been deserted for 1500 years, but prior to that, it was happening. And its original name was Yashmutul. It was renamed Tikal, which means the place of the voices or the echo. Because the limestone material used to build the ruins echoes when you speak or clap in certain areas. When touring these ruins, it will take about five hours and you will discover that only half of this incredible place has been excavated to show how the jungle has slowly taken it back over hundreds of years. The subtropical rainforest jungle around these ruins is virtually untouched, and there are many animals to be found in the area, like the Coatamande. The Samuk Champe Pools and Caves. What an incredible place. The name Samuk Champe means water flowing or that hides under the earth. Samuk Champe is a stunning river and jungle landscape where the Cajabon River flows through and under limestone, creating a series of stepped, turquoise-colored, natural, beautiful pools. To see the pools from above, you can make the very steep climb up, 15 to 30 minutes or so, to a viewpoint. 
If you prefer to swim, you can also hike down to the river and you can also tube in these pools. You can book your tour to see this area once you're nearby in a town like Coban, for example. Coban is about four hours north of Guatemala City, and then to get to the pools from Coban, it's about another three and a half hours. If you happen to be staying in the Antigua area, it's about seven to nine hours away due to the road conditions and mountainous terrain, but well worth the visit. The caves in this area are also awesome. The cave system goes into the mountainside a full 11 kilometers, but the typical tour that people are taken on is about a two kilometer round trip. It's a candlelit experience of climbing, swimming, wading, and jumping, depending on your adventure level. Hey, <laughs> if you're getting value from this video, now's a great time to go ahead and press that like button. Smash it. Now smash that like button. Monte Rico. Don't you love those people that roll their R's? <laughs> Monte Rico. This southern coastal area of Guatemala is known for its volcanic black sand beaches, annual influx of sea turtles, and its weekend beach retreat location for citizens of Guatemala City. Four things to see and do in this area are, number one, the beach of course. The sand is black and hot in the midday. The water is warm and the beaches go in both directions as far as the eye can see. You might even be able to see El Salvador from there. Number two, the lagoon and mangroves. The alligators and caiman have been hunted to extinction, unfortunately, here, and almost all the turtles, too. But in 1976, a law was finally passed. No hunting. Yay. And now people are trying to repopulate the species in the reserve. More on that in a minute. You can see the cuatro ojos, or the four-eyed jumping fish, in this lagoon. And at certain times of the year, the mangroves here dry up to leave behind the famous white salt of Monte Rico. Number three, the wildlife sanctuary. This is a great place to see where they are raising alligators and sea turtles, including turtle eggs to try to repopulate this area. When the turtle eggs have hatched, you can join in on a turtle release event. Four, the fairies. You can see the cool ferries, if there are such a thing, that take cars and even huge delivery trucks floating on the river up north to La Avellana. El Paradon. This southern coastal area is just a little further west from the last one we just talked about. It was once a sleepy Pacific Coast fishing village that has lately gained popularity with surfers and backpackers and is growing quickly with numerous hotels and restaurants now in the area. It's located about two and a half hours from Antigua, and this is the place to go surfing. However, be cautioned that this is not a swimming location due to very strong currents. You can even enjoy bird watching on a boat tour in this area. A kayak or an SUP board is also an excellent activity in the mangroves nearby. There are lots of sea turtles in this area here too, and they come up to nest in about September to October. Unlike Costa Rica, where there is an actual police force that monitors the beach, Guatemala doesn't have that kind of funding. Instead, they set up a turtle sanctuary, about one on every beach. And they say that people are supposed to put 20% of what they catch back into the sanctuaries. Unfortunately, people were not doing that. And so sanctuaries have now started to pay the poacher for all their eggs and that has finally been working to repopulate the turtles. So donating to these sanctuaries is really a great help. El Paradon Sanctuary bought 63,000 baby turtle eggs in 2022. The historic city of Antigua. In the 16 and 1700s, Antigua used to be the capital of Guatemala. But after volcanoes and earthquakes caused numerous destructive events to the city, the capital moved to a safer location where Guatemala City now stands. Antigua is a colonial city rich in history with gorgeous architecture and cobblestone streets. There are numerous noteworthy landmarks to see, some of which are the Santa Catalina Arch, Cerro de la Cruz, Iglesia de la Merced, some ruins and many museums and galleries where you can learn about Antigua's long history. The climate here is an eternal spring type climate and as such is popular among tourists and expats. We have two more areas to share with you. One is our favorite. 
But first, if you're looking to learn a little more about other countries to travel to in the area, we've spent over 13 months living in Mexico, and we will link some videos or a playlist for you at the end of this video. Volcán de Acatenango. Most people base out of Antigua to get to this awesome volcano hike. A typical tour takes about two days and one night, but we're sure there's other options. On the first day, you hike about six hours to the base camp. A night can be spent here. And then on the second day, you hike about one and a half hours to the summit, weather permitting. And don't let our easy description here fool you. This entire hike is about 70% incline that takes you through farmland, tropical cloud forest, high alpine forest, and volcanic rock areas. The view from the summit is spectacular. You might even catch an eruption. Especially if you had the bean dip that was a little bit off the night before. Lake Atitlan might be our favorite area. Four to five hours to the west of Guatemala City, this volcanic crater lake is surrounded by three volcanoes and a dozen or so small towns all around the lake with their own feel and flavor unique to themselves. For example, Panajachel is where most people arrive and it's the biggest town with full-size grocery stores, among other things. San Antonio is where the majority of all clothing and fabrics in the region are made. San Marcos has a hippie yoga vibe. San Juan, a long history of weaving and is very peaceful. San Pedro has a large great central market that people from other towns even come to for things. San Pedro is known for backpackers, its Spanish schools and nightlife. We liked it so much, we spent two months here. Santiago is larger and has a cloud forest area where you can see the beautiful Quetzal. The main way to travel between these towns is by boat, giving you an excellent view of the surrounding areas. 